Not all chargers are equal. I have about seven right here and each is slightly different in terms of power delivery. This beckons a brief lecture in electrical circuits. Got your pens and notepads ready folks, here we go. On the face of every power brick, you'll find a bunch of jumbled words and letters that most of us, to be quite frank, often overlook. As long as my device charges, that's all I care about, exclaimed Sour Sally. I like to take things nice and slow, man, and so does my phone when it, you know, like, comes to charging and whatnot, proclaimed Stoner Stewie. Um, no, said no one ever. With the exception of an increase in both battery temperature and dendrite, which are entirely separate yet non-pivotal issues for the most part, we want fast. Phones are now coming out with quick charging capabilities, and that's nice and all, but why can't I use just any old charging brick? Or for that matter, why can't I use my computer's own USB ports? Well, you can, and there's nothing stopping you from doing so, but there are very evident downsides to these. Cue the circuits lesson. So there are three basic terms you need to know, power, amperage, and voltage. Power is defined as the product of amperage and voltage. That's essentially all you need to know. Your phone's charging time is determined by the amount of power supplied to its battery, and it's the charger's job to convert and deliver a specific amount of power to the device in question. Find any old power brick you've got lying around, maybe one you're using on your phone at this very moment, and scan for a cluster of letters and numbers typically engraved or printed directly on the charger itself. You should see the words input and output. For any device that plugs into a wall, depending on where you live, the input line should read something like 100 to 240 volts, 50 slash 60 hertz, etc. This is unimportant. It's the output line that you'll want to pay close attention to. Here things will vary depending on the brick you're looking at. First should be the voltage. For almost any brick that connects via a USB hub to your phone, this should be somewhere around 5 volts. It's the universal standard for USB. However, the amperage you'll read, denoted by the capital letter A, will be unique. This value could be anywhere from 0.2 amps to upwards of 3 amps, and that, my friends, is where size matters. With the exception of turbochargers and special power delivery systems, all power bricks with a USB interface will deliver X amount of power, where X is, again, voltage times amperage. In most cases, voltage is 5, which means that you'll mainly want to be focusing on amperage to determine how much power, also defined in SI units as joules per second or watts, are being supplied to your phone from said power brick. These power bricks here are rated from 0.4 amps or 400 milliamps to 0.85 amps and have a relatively low power output. This one here delivers approximately 1.76 watts of power, and this one here delivers 4.34 watts. So you can see that subtle changes in amperage, even while the voltage remains relatively constant, results in a substantial change in power delivered to your phone. Check this one out. This Aki Amp 5-way charger delivers a grand total of 12 watts of power through each of its four USB 3.1 headers, and if your device is USB Type-C compatible, variable power delivery between 10.8 and 19.5 watts. This Motorola Turbo Charger, depending on your device's specifications, can deliver up to a staggering 25.8 watts. Crazy. But okay, Greg, that's fine and dandy and all, some bricks deliver more power to your phone. So what? Show me the numbers. That's what I'm about to do. I use three devices, a Motorola X Pure, an Apple iPhone 5S, and a Galaxy S4. I think it's a fair spectrum of phones to test with. I also used five charging ports, the Motorola Turbo Charger, which came out of the Moto X Pure's box, by the way, the Aki Amp Charger, a 0.85 amp generic power brick, a 1 amp port on my stereo receiver, and a USB 2.0 port on my personal computer, which delivers only 2.5 watts of power at 5 volts and 0.5 amps. I allowed each phone to completely charge to 100%, timing each with a stopwatch. I then would do as much as I could on the phone, including running Geekbench over and over, keeping the LED on, and streaming music in the background until the phone died and would not turn on again, and then switch it up with a different charger. I charged all three phones on all five chargers, the exception being the iPhone 5S and the Motorola Turbo Charger. Since this charger has the ability to deliver more than 5 volts, it cannot use the USB interface, which means I cannot connect my lightning cable to the brick. No big deal though, that's why I have the Samsung in the loop. Anyway, here we go.
So let's run through the first set of graphs, well, first. The 1 amp receiver and 0.85 amp generic brick times were relatively consistent across the board and this should have been the case. The iPhone charged the quickest, perhaps due to its significantly smaller battery size, followed by the Moto X and lastly the Galaxy S4. Average time was roughly 350 minutes or just under 6 hours. That may seem a bit long, but if you think about it, that's a short enough charge cycle to be used while you're sleeping at night, assuming you get a full 8 hours. The Aki Amp Charger was quite impressive, cutting charging times in thirds, with all three phones yielding a roughly 130 minute recharge time. It was fairly consistent across the board to say the least. So just over two hours. This is thanks to the Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0 and 3.0 integration and high amp output. The Motorola Turbo Charger performed as expected with its intended user, the Moto X, resulting in a mere 48 minute recharge time. Keep in mind, this is from zero to 100% folks, followed by the S4, which is also quick charge capable, but not at the 12 volt output that the X Pure is, hence the 87 minutes. Still not bad, mind you. Of course, we couldn't test the iPhone with this charger, but expect it to fall somewhere between the X Pure and the S4 thanks to its smaller battery. A shocking result involved the USB 2.0 header. Both the iPhone 5S and Galaxy S4 did charge, albeit for lengthy amounts of time, but the Moto X Pure, for reasons initially unknown, refused to charge. The phone started off at 0%, worked its way to 3% over the course of an hour and a half, no I am not exaggerating there, and then proceeded to decline in percentage once once again back to zero, at which point the phone died, restarted itself, and then repeated the cycle. This was likely due to the underlying processes taking place within the Moto X while it was charging. Basically, the phone was consuming more power while charging than it was actually receiving power from the charger. That is unfortunate and actually quite comical. But what I want you to take away from this video is the fact that while cheap and generic chargers will get the job done, it's the beefier ones that pack the punch. For quick charging times, look no further than the amperage rating on the brick itself. If it's a USB 2.0 port, that amperage is fixed to half an amp. If it's a turbo or quick charger, then you'll have to take into consideration both the voltage and amperage ratings. Special thanks to Aki for hooking us up with their 5-way amp charger, as well as their car charger, which includes both a USB Type-C port and their quick charger USB port. You can plug up to five devices into their five-way charger with no loss in charge time and with Type-C gaining support on phones like the Nexus 6P and 5X, you won't regret opting for the newer tech. I've attached links in this video's description to both of these products, so be sure to check them out and let us know what you think. If you liked what you saw in this video and you think the experimentation was cool and unique, give this thing a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down if you feel the complete opposite or if you hate everything about life, click the subscribe button if you haven't already, stay tuned for... for... an interesting PC build featuring an interesting video card. That's all I'm going to say, folks. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.